So in the stomach re region, remember those gastric glands are within the mucosal layer. In the duodenum, you'll see some glands in the submucosa called Brunner's glands. And the secretions from these glands are going to help neutralize the acidic chyme received from the stomach. And so it's not evident here, but in this region, it's going to also receive secretions from the gallbladder and the pancreas to complete the digestive process to break down the remaining particles into the monosaccharides, amino acids, and smaller lipids. So in the more distal regions of the small intestine, we're going to see the absorption of all these molecules. So in these next regions, and in particular the jejunum, we're going to see these pronounced macroscopic folds known as the plicae circulus or circular folds. And in these circular folds, there's going to be smaller projections called villi. Each villi will be a projection of the mucosal layer and the simple columnar epithelia, which will line that villi, will all contain microvilli. And the microvilli here are going to appear as a so-called brush border. So you're not going to see those distinct projections as you might see with cilia. So also within that simple columnar lining, you're also going to see goblet cells uh, interspersed within those. And those are usually pretty obvious as well. And when we see these folds and invaginations such as this, we are seeing an increase in surface area. And in the case of the small intestine, this increased surface area is going to allow greater absorption into the bloodstream of the digested products. All right, so the circular folds are going to contain the submucosal and mucosal layers. And in this sample, it's nice because the collagen of the dense irregular connective tissue that composes the submucosa is stained blue. And so you're able to clearly see these layers and which layer contributes to which structure. So there's a boundary between the two layers for one of the circular folds, and you can make out the thin muscularis mucosa. So this is a nice sample to really visualize the different layers because of this staining of the dense irregular connective tissue there. Also here you can see the epithelial lining underlying the lamina propria. So this area of the mucosa is going to contain capillaries and lymphatic vessels that are going to take away those digested products that these epithelial cells have absorbed from the lumen. So for this sample also, the boundary between the submucosa and the muscularis externa is also very obvious when you're not just looking at a mess of pink junk. The sample also has a very clear and distinct boundary between the inner circular layer and the outer longitudinal layer. And in the outer layer here, you could actually see the overall cell shape, which is nice, which you don't usually be able to see. You're usually only able to see the nuclei. And moving distally, we're going to come to the ileum, where the final absorption is occurring. You're going to see this number of circular folds decrease. The villi are still present, and the simple columnar epithelial lining with its goblet cells in this sample has a pretty clear brush border, which is, of course, the microvilli. And here we see a very thin muscularis mucosa, and then outside of that is the submucosa with that fibrous connective tissue, and there, hopefully by now, it's a little easier to see where that submucosal layer ends and the smooth muscle tissue of the muscularis externa begins. And this sample also clearly shows the difference in between the inner circular and the outer longitudinal layer, these small rounded dots of the inner layer, and those elongated nuclei of the outer layer. Always keep in mind the appearance of whether the cells are elongated or round, and these respective layers are going to switch depending on whether you're looking at a cross section or a longitudinal section. So here's the illustration of those two muscle layers, and inward of them, here shown in the submucosa, but really they're in the mucosa, are these congregates of cells from the immune system. The mucosal surface is a delicate, permeable lining fitting its function of absorption. This fragility also makes it a prime spot for infectious agents to invade the body. So you'll often see these clumps of immune cells, or lymph nodules, just deep to the epithelia within the lamina propria. In the mucosa of the ileum, there are prominent lymph nodes called Pyre's patches, which you could see bulging upward toward the lumen. So this immune tissue is going to protect the small intestine from bacteria that normally live in the nearby large intestine. 
Before we move into the colon, I want to mention that in the small intestine, we saw those large projections of villi, which increase surface area needed for nutrient absorption. And the space separating the villi is the lumen containing the digestive contents. And you can see these villi are outlined by what's actually a ring of epithelia surrounding the core of lamina propria. And moving deeper away from the lumen, at the base of the villi, you'll see these short invaginations of the mucosal epithelium. This is an intestinal crypt, and it's surrounded by the lamina propria. So among other things, the intestinal crypts are the location of the epithelial stem cells, which constantly renew the epithelial lining. So while the small intestine is more or less dominated by the villi, as we move into the colon, we'll see a relatively flat surface of the mucosa, and where the main structure are these intestinal crypts. And these are sometimes referred to as the intestinal glands of the mucosal epithelium. The simple columnar cells here are carrying out the major function of absorbing water from the undigested mass as it moves through the colon. Another major function is to secrete large amounts of lubricating mucus to help the passage of feces. This is why you see that increasing abundance of goblet cells as you move distally. This is even more obvious in this stain where the goblet cells may outnumber the absorptive simple columnar cells. And the rest of the mucosa and submucosa is unremarkable, so the last thing I want to mention is this modification of the longitudinal layer of the muscularis externa. There are a few thickenings running longitudinally around the colon of this longitudinal layer, which are visible externally and are called the tenue coli. Tenue coli help form those segments in the colon called hostra, which help structure the peristaltic contractions moving the undigested compact mass of feces slowly towards the anal canal. <laughs> the last segment of the colon, the rectum, is still lined with that simple columnar epithelia, but at the rectal anal junction, we're going to see a transition from that simple columnar to a stratified squamous. So we started out with the stratified squamous in the mouth, pharynx, and esophagus, where physical protection is needed, which is also the case as we end up with stratified squamous as we approach the exit. <laughs> and there's other major changes, such as the presence of skeletal muscle of the external anal sphincter, which ideally provides voluntarily control over feces expulsion. <laughs> but here we're just going to follow the transition as it moves from a simple columnar epithelia and then gradually transitions to that stratified squamous non-keratinized. This is certainly a thinner stratified squamous in the esophagus, and it almost looks like transitional epithelia, but it is stratified squamous wet. But as you move more distally, we'll see that non-keratinized stratified squamous become a keratinized stratified squamous that's going to be continuous with your skin. So that's it. You're going to want to be able to identify for any sample the layers and sublayers and identify the specific region of the GI tract. And so for that, you're going to first look at the mucosa for the epithelial type and then rugae, circular folds, gastric pits, intestinal crypts, which layer the glands are in, what the junctions look like, and then there's also a few specialized cell types. And for lecture exam purposes, understand the general and specific functions of the regions, the layers, and all the structures. All right, see you later.